Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Trying to pump these out as many as I can before the baby comes. We'll see uh, if I can even get another one out there after this one. Uh, but time is running out. Uh, <laughs> so let me get into this one right here. Uh, the folks at Castello di Omarosa uh, in the Diamond Mountain District of the Napa Valley in Calistoga, um, they've, they've sent me some samples in the past. And if you look back, my most recent ones, probably about a year ago, uh, they did a bunch of just really nice uh, Chardonnays. Um, a couple from the Bien Nacido Vineyards. Uh, there was one from the Napa Valley. Valley that I really liked and I think the winemaking team is really hitting their stride. I wasn't that much of a fan of Castello di Amoroso when I was first introduced like five, six years ago, but um, things are really looking good right now and so I'm excited to get into this one right here. Uh, this is their 2012 um, Sangiovese uh, Napa Valley. Most of this fruit is coming from their uh, Diamond Mountain Estate, but they also have some, uh, or Diamond Mountain District Estate. I think I got that right. Yeah? Yeah? Diamond Mountain District Estate. Um, but they are also pulling some fruit from uh, Atlas Peak and uh, Mount Veter. So I'm always liking the mountain uh, influences of the Napa Valley. 95% Sangiovese, 5% uh, Merlot, which is really just kind of a Merlot and Sangiovese. That's like just a classic uh, blend right there. You might also see some Cabernet uh, in there in, in other uh, Sangiovese uh, type entries trees uh, from Italy, like when you think about those super Tuscans, right, you'll see a lot of that stuff. Uh, 22 months in French oak. Um, I will tell you that this is a nice, 2012 again, uh, there's a nice like deep ruby red here. Um, it is uh, fairly translucent. I can almost see my uh, fingers through the bottom of this glass. Let me give it a little sniff here. Two thousand twelve is very much. Um, it's it's a highly acclaimed uh, year for the Napa Valley. Um, you know, in the middle of uh, these drought uh, type conditions, or actually when stuff like that just started, so you didn't have to worry about um, as much rain interfering uh, with those grapes before harvest. Um, really nice uh, long hot days uh, in the summer. You are getting quite a bit of a influence of that oak on the nose. It's not really like an oak monster type of thing. Um, but you are just getting like a general uh, toastiness uh, there. Uh, there's a little like fresh cream uh, on the nose as well. But you are getting like this really nice like dried cherry fruit from the Sangiovese and, and cherries for me are definitely something that really jump out uh, as we explore the Sangiovese grape. And there's like, uh, again, I talk about like dried cherries, um, but I'm also getting like a little tobacco leaf on the nose as well. And I like some leafiness uh, in my big reds. And this is a big boy. This is 14.8% uh, uh, alcohol. Again, not necessarily atypical um, in red wines from Napa Valley. That fruit is really going to get nice and ripe there. Um, and it's all about how you manage that, you know? So on the palate, mm. and so I'm really liking how there is still some of that dried cherry. There's also like some ripe, bright um, red cherry notes. Um, there's a little cranberry, a little bit of like uh, uh, a little orange zest. Um, again, you're getting some of that leafiness that's around here. This is definitely like um, 
it's 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 brighter than most of your uh, Italian uh, Sangiovese um, based wines. Um, so if you think about you know those of you that are into like Chiantis and and Super Tuscans and and things of that nature. Um, it's not going to be as earthy, although there are some earth-driven sensibilities there with that leafiness of that tobacco. There's a little bit of like a mushroomy thing. It's It's got, um, I mean, it's almost as I talk about like the, the mushroominess and, and even a little bit of that tobacco, a little bit of that. Um, I'm almost getting like a sense of like, you know, th this is never going to be mistaken for Pinot Noir. Obviously not. Obviously not, but hear me out here. There are some Pinot Noir type sensibilities. Uh, the the subtlety of these earthy type of notes that are there. Um, I think it's weird. Like this is a Sangiovese that I think could really appeal um, to folks that are very much in the, in the Pinot uh, uh, realm. Um, I like that. There's this really nice long acidity that's not going away um since my last uh, uh taste here um and those very subtle earthy notes again not like not like old world uh earth where it's just like dirt right but those subtle like earthy type of notes um are still kind of lingering on the palate too you know this is a 30 dollar wine um and i think that this is dominating like this is destroying uh, most wines that are going to be most red wines that are going to be in that thirty dollar range. And there's just this really nice, you know, along with that just classic cherry note um, on the nose. Um, it's kind of luscious on the initial attack. It's got that. Um, Napa Valley lusciousness. Um, there's this part of me that, that thinks like some folks may interpret this as like just a Napa Valley Merlot and there is some influence from that 5% Merlot there, but um, this is truly a, a, a um, this is a great, great Cabernet, I'm sorry, whoa, great, great, uh, I, I want to say Cabernet because I'm thinking Napa Valley, but it's a, it's a really, really a, a, a great Napa Valley Sangiovese, and I think that, you know, um, folks that are very much into Napa fruit, not a lot of folks are trying Nap Napa Valley Sangioveses, and, and this is nice, I really like the influence of um those uh the the mountain estates and that that nice acidity that goes along with this um this is a fantastic wine um i'm gonna put it in that wow uh, i'm gonna say 92 plus this is this is fantastic and i'm loving this wow maybe i'm in a good mood because i got a baby coming i don't know but this is dude pick this up. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of their stuff's available online and maybe I'll, I'll put a link down below. Um, but if you're in California, if you're in Northern California, just drive up to the castle and buy this because this is wow. Awesome. Good job, guys. Till next time, everybody stay rad.